Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show, our Hall of Famer and uh, talent extraordinaire, Dr. Bonnie Ring, joining us here again. Excited to have her here live from the West Coast. How are you? I'm good. The sun is shining. Oh, I'm sure it's beautiful. Happy Halloween. We got to start off with that. It's Happy deep. Halloween. It's a great little holiday, especially for the kids. Uh, Dr. Bonnie Ring, you've been our honoree for many months now. We're excited to have you back. Tell us a little bit about your career, what you do, and then we'll get into today's topic for the day. Well, I have been uh, many things. Um, I have many titles. I have a title as a doctor because I have a doctorate in education and I'm a licensed psychologist and I am a reverend. I'm an Episcopal priest and a spiritual director. So I, I, I move in the world of real people with real feelings and real values and help them to come to accept themselves as they really are. Beautiful. And today I thought we'd talk about what that means. How do you become your own true self? Great. There's an awful lot of emphasis in child rearing to be good children. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we often have bad children develop because they don't like being told what to do Mm -hmm. or we have children that modify their behavior in order to get acceptance Mm -hmm. and um i just decided i there was an article in psychology today a few weeks ago and on authenticity i decided to look through it and see what it said and i was impressed that getting to know yourself takes an effort Mm -hmm. it isn't automatic and it grows best in an environment where there is less self-criticism and harsh judgment and more self-understanding and self-compassion and i like i like to unpack those words what does it mean to understand yourself Well, it means understanding what you feel, what you need, what you value, and and how do you do that? Well, taking time with yourself. Amazing. We're all so encouraged to be extroverted, but being a little introverted is good for you. Yeah. Interesting. I love, I love to watch your expressions, Jill. Ah, oh, um, yes. <laughs> um, for instance, um, the most critical component of authenticity yes. is self-awareness. Mm-hmm. And um, for instance, I got really angry a week ago at church because the music was so intrusive, I couldn't pray. And I spoke out loud enough for everyone to hear that the music was dreadful. And I really offended the person who had chosen it because he had very carefully chosen an Israeli and Muslim uh, singers singing a song of peace, but it wasn't peaceful. It wasn't peaceful, but I had to stop and say to myself, okay, why are you so on edge Mm -hmm. that you would overreact to a piece of music? Mm -hmm. And then I realized there were things I was working on that were very stressful. And that stress had reached a maximum and the music just put me right over the edge. And I was able to talk about it the following week, which was really amazing. Um, so one of the things I've learned, there, there are two terrific ways to get to know yourself better. One of them is to be, is to go and see a therapist and actually talk about your feelings. And the other is to spend enough time alone with yourself, asking yourself how you feel, Mm -hmm. what you need and whether life's working for you this week. And, um, I think that when we do that, we can be better friends to ourselves. 
And I think we are all trained to be good friends to others, but we're not trained to be good friends to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that would help is being accurate in your perception and don't deny what you see and feel and how you behave. But be realistic about it and assess it accurately. And if it needs changing, you know, yeah. consider making a change. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think if all of us were more self-reflective, we'd be better parents, we'd be better workers, we'd be better friends to others and to ourselves. And I think. One of the ingredients is to be unbiased in the way you process information so that you don't deny what you see or hear. And another is to be aware of your value. I think, I think our culture has become painfully aware that there's a lot of hatred in our society. Yeah. And a lot of discrimination against mm. people who are different. And if you really value human relationships, you can't harbor that kind of hatred. Mm -hmm. You just no. can't. No. And I think if you're going to have a close relationship, the only way to achieve it is to be real. You know? Others might not want the you that you're going to present. You might be a needy you some days. And you might want mm -hmm. a lot of affection and attention. And not everybody can give that. Mm -hmm. And so part of being honest with yourself is knowing when you're asking for more than you can get from the people you're asking it from. Um, and I think... Um, most of us, if we're really honest, may find increased self-knowledge to be painful because yeah. we may not be as talented as we would like to be. And there will always be people in your life who will volunteer criticism. And part of your job is to just to take it in and then weigh it later. You don't have to fight it. You don't have to defend against it. You just can say, well, thank you for your feedback. I'll think about that. What a difference. When somebody doesn't get resistance to their feedback, they're more likely to give both positive and negative feedback in the future. True. Sure. So I'm, I'm asking you to think about what your motives are, what your needs are, mm -hmm. what your feelings are, and, um, and to trust what you find out. Now, here's where I would love feedback. Um, you can call me 650-560-8590. I'm in Half Moon Bay, California. Or you can email me at drbonnyring at comcast.com. And that's drbonnyring, B-O-N-N-I-E-R-I-N-G, at comcast.net. Or you can go to my website and learn more about me and then contact me. And my website is drbonnyring.com and also drbonnyringsbooks.com. So those are the ways to reach me. And I would love to hear from you. That's been one of my frustrations. When I was on the radio, it was always an audience response. And uh, a podcast doesn't have an audience automatically. So you end up talking to the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and to the person that's interviewing you. 
Um, so um, I think I have values. Mm, I have lots of values. I value people as they really are. Mm -hmm. And I encourage people to express their genuine selves. And in therapy, there's no reason to lie. Being your true self is the best way to get healthy. And maybe that's the punchline. That the more real you are in what you say about yourself and what you do, mm -hmm. the healthier a human being you'll be. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, what? No, I'm saying, wow, it's so true. I mean, we have one life to live and I feel we should be our best selves and not everybody puts that effort in, puts that time in. We let time go. We, it's like, we have to start living now and ah, feel good. Don't you love feeling good? I feel good because it's like a holiday good. and all the kids are happy today. My kids are happy and I love today. It's like that happy day, but why can't we have happy days every day? It doesn't have to be a little holiday like this. It's kind of funny, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it's um it's designed after All Saints Day, which is tomorrow. Yeah. And um the ghouls and the ghosts and the gremlins are just one aspect of humanity because the other aspect is full of goodness and joy and happiness. And I think when kids get to dress up and get to ask for candy mm -hmm. or get money for UNICEF. They feel good. They feel important. They feel valued. Mm -hmm. What's what else could be better for anyone than to feel good? Yeah, it's, a, it's an ideal. Uh, I live in a over fifty five community, and so as a result, there's no trick or treating here because mm -hmm. there are no kids, <laughs> and yet we are all kids at heart. Yeah, and I suspect that if we were sensible we would go around giving candy away mm -hmm. and that might be another form of Halloween that we haven't ever considered, but the giving of candy, the, the, the homes that receive the kids and give candy, they're oh. really special. They know what children need and they're ready to give it to them. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm I'm struck with how many parents own that they go after the candy as soon as the kids go to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so true. I already started. We had a lot of Halloween stuff today, and then I have the candy ready for the kids. But I already ate like about five Twix, three Milky Way, one peanut M and M. So I'm on a sugar high too. <laughs> yep. Well, you have three hours on me, so. Yes. <laughs> you had more time to eat sugar than I had. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think I think one of the things that gets in the way of authenticity is a, a need to please others and become who you think they want you to be. And there's a lot of pressure to do that in our culture. Mm -hmm. I think it's destructive. I really don't think it helps to become the person somebody else wants you to be. I think it's much more important to be your own true self. Yeah. Um, for instance, people say to me, well, how do I get to know myself? And the funny thing is that there are two sides to it. One is just an awareness of what you're saying and doing mm -hmm. and act, how you're acting and how you're feeling. That's awareness. And it's a really critical component to authenticity. Um, but the other is paying attention so that you do have the awareness. Mm -hmm. And that means maybe journaling or sitting quietly alone and processing the feelings that you're having as a result of something that just happened in your life or with somebody else. And the more you know about you, the more you you can become. 
uh, I think that frequently we deny ourselves Mm -hmm. or we exaggerate ourselves or we blame others for our own faults. Um, There are certain people in this world who are called narcissists that are really good at blaming others. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you can take self-blame and don't treat it harshly, but treat it gently and let the information in, you can make incremental changes that would make a difference in your relationships with other people. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I think one of the parts of authenticity is becoming aware of your strengths and your weaknesses. And most of us know our strengths better than our weaknesses because people compliment us on our strengths. Mm -hmm. We get feedback on it. And then when we hear negative feedback, maybe about our weaknesses or our ingenuineness, um, we're more likely to get defensive and um, resist hearing what we're being told but I think allowing information in allows you to be more real so stop denying what you hear from others be more accepting of their feedback allow them to tell you what they think you don't have to agree with everything you hear Mm -hmm. but you don't have to fight it either you can just take it in Sort it out in your own time. True. So um, the other piece of authenticity that I think is really important is um, being real with the people that matter to you. Because they need to know who you are if they're going to be a good friend to you. They need to know what your needs are. They need to know what your strengths are. They need to know when you're uncomfortable or when you're feeling needy. Um, It's so easy to tell somebody that what they're thinking isn't real. And then we we condemn ourselves to a false self-image. So that's about all I have to say about authenticity. Um, I do think that um, the more accurate your perception of yourself comes from showing your true self and um, encouraging others to say what they see. One of the wonderful things about being a preacher, which is very different from being a therapist, is that people tell you afterwards whether what you said makes sense to them. So like on Sunday, I talked about self-compassion. And it's a favorite subject of mine because I learned it in a class. I took a five-day residential class with Kristen Neff and Christopher Germer on self-compassion. And they had us paying attention to our feelings all day, every day for five days. And when we felt bad to soothe ourselves or, and when we felt encouraged to compliment ourselves. And at the end of the five days, I felt happier than I had ever felt in my entire life. And it was because I was paying attention to me yeah, and I was being kind to me. Mm -hmm. I was being caring and I was being comforting and I actually liked the course so much I went back and I did it again the next year for another five days wow uh which is a credit to both Chris and Kristen um they've both written books about self-compassion and they have created a workbook on Mm self-compassion it's really very helpful and I used it as show and tell in my sermon on Sunday I brought the workbook with me so people could take make pictures of it and order it for themselves. And it was a really a very positive 
Um, you know, Jesus was asked by uh, somebody testing him, what is the greatest commandment? And his answer was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And do you know most people forget that last line, to love yourself? They don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to extend to themselves the very kindness they would extend to a stranger. And it's not just good enough to take care of strangers. Mm -hmm. It's also important to take care of you. You are important. And you will make yourself feel important if you pay attention to yourself. And treat yourself with kindness mm -hmm. and generosity. Um, I was talking with somebody yesterday who was very, very stressed. Her jo job managers were really being critical and, cru and crude and unhelpful. And um, I urged her to spend time just being kind to herself. Think of things that she would like to do and allow herself to do them, whether it's um, movies that are joyful and full of love or books or conversations with people that care. All of those things make a difference in how we see ourselves. So once again, uh, we're almost at the end of the hour, end of the half hour, and I just want to urge you to begin to identify your true self Mm -hmm. By paying attention, by showing some more awareness of how you feel, what you value, what your motives are, uh, what you want for yourself, mm -hmm. and giving yourself the opportunity to have what you need. Oh. Beautiful. Inspiring. Dr. Bonnie Ring, how can we find you and reach out to you? Please call me at 650 560 8590. That's an easy number to remember. Or get in touch with me by email at drbonnyring, drbonnyring at comcast.net. And I'd love to hear from you. And I'd love to know what you're taking from these talks and how they're helpful and if they're helpful. And if they're not helpful, tell me that too. Hey, yeah, right. Be honest. Okay. <laughs> Be honest. I'm sure Absolutely. they are. Thank you so much. Pleasure to have you back here as always. And congratulations on being in the Hall of Fame and doing what you do. Dr. Bonnie Ring .com. Check her out. Reach out to her and enjoy your Halloween. Oh, are you going to dress up as anything? Come on. No, no, but that's that's not necessary. Oh, good. It's in um, your heart. The spirit of giving and of tricks and treats and candy. Yes. Yes. Well, treat yourself to something good today, okay? Oh, and I, I bought a beautiful pumpkin. Perfect. So Last you're decorating. Year, That's gave festive. Me a big pumpkin. So I went to Trader Joe's and I bought this really creative looking pumpkin. It's got bumps and it's got character. And, and so it's sitting in my office waiting for me to welcome me to Perfect. Hollywood. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. 
We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.